Welcome to Book Circle Online. We are talking book three in the Canadian West series, When Breaks the Dawn, next. This is Book Circle Online, featuring in-depth discussion, insight, news, and commentary on all the world's leading book titles and their authors. And now, Book Circle Online. Hello, you guys. Oh, we are back. Yay. I'm going to let a little laugh. We are back. We're back to Book Circle Online doing the When Calls the Heart book series, the Woo! first book series, Canadian West series, When Breaks the Dawn. <laughs> we're talking about that. I am one of your hosts, James Lott Jr. We're so back to be here with all you hearties. We're so glad to be with you today. And my two ladies of the house. Woo! They're co-ladies Woo! of the house. Yes. <laughs> she has her voice. I have a voice. Maria Provenzano. Oh, hi, guys. I'm Maria Provenzano. You can find me at Maria Provenzano, and everything will be there. And I am so happy to be with you guys today. I have been missing the Hardys so much. Yeah. I just tweeted that out before, okay. like before we um, started shooting. I was like, I miss it. I miss When Calls the Heart. So I'm glad we have this. Yes, yes. I agree. And my lovely co host next to me. Yes, our fearless leader. <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Marissa Serafini. You can follow me on Twitter at Serafini TV. I'm Ooh. glad to be back. Yes. Yes. Yay. And I, you can follow me. Yeah, James Lodge Jr. you know all over the place. And thank you, Hardys. <laughs> and Hardys, thank you so much. I give you a heartfelt thank you for all the support you've given me the last couple weeks of my brother's Aww. death. Yes. So it's been wonderful. You guys are a village. You guys really they are. are. They really are. You guys sent me flowers. I mean, it just it was amazing. I just I'm overwhelmed with joy and, and comfort. So it's very sweet, you guys. And I've already cried enough the last like three weeks. Aww. So, but thank you. And you guys in the chat room. Hello, you guys. We're glad you're here. Lisa's Yay. in there, Sarah uh, uh, S. Matthews, Emily Johnson so far. I'm happy to see you guys. Oh we have Jeanette Oak coming Yay. on shortly. Yeah, I know. On shortly. Marissa's gonna like pass out. She is. She's so excited. <laughs> she started this whole thing for us. Today's and now been a day. This, this is gonna <laughs> be. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, you had a good day. Yeah, going for it too. But this is good so day. exciting because she is the creator of this whole movement. Right. Exactly. Movement. It's it's a it movement, is a movement. Right? Yeah. It's a movement. And Marissa got us on board and part of the movement. So I just yeah. feel like I always think to Marissa, she's the <laughs> she's the one. Oh my goodness! I think we have her on the line. Ooh. Hello. Miss Jeanette. Hello there, everyone. Yay! Yay! <laughs> How are you? I am fine, thank you. And you? We're good. So I'm James, and then you guys. I are... am Maria. Hello, Jeanette. Okay. I am Marissa. Thank you for being with us. We so appreciate it. Well, thank you for calling. It's our pleasure. I just want to, the first question I want to ask you is, how does it feel knowing that your books still resonate decades later? You know, that's the interesting part about history, and I love it because uh, even though things change, uh, even society in a way changes, yet the human needs never do. They carry from generation to generation. We still have that need of companionship, that need of being respected and accepted. Uh, we have our down times and our up times. And, and so the human heart, basically, though the, what goes on in the world around it might change a lot, stays quite constant. Oh, well you're going to make me cry. <laughs> well that put. is so, yeah, that's so beautiful. Because mm -hmm. these books, I mean, this series is still going on. Yeah. People are reading them today for the first time. Yeah. Like we are. It like we is are. exciting. It is exciting. It's, uh, I, I can only say that uh, God does wonderful things. Yes, he does. So uh, we will just accept the fact that he has a reason. <laughs> he does. Well, and is he the reason that you really, that brought you into the inspiration behind this book? Because these are so, you know, he is in all of these books. And so is that what really made you want to write these? Well, I had written uh, another series before this, in fact, a couple of series. And so uh, this was well into my writing venture. But the the thing that prompted me to uh, to write this series is the fact of uh, the every instinct I think of of us as young women. Uh, most of us, in fact, have this great desire for family, mm -hmm. and there are so many women that that is not fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I ache for them. Uh, after we were married, I lost, uh, I had a miscarriage with the first pregnancy, and then we lost our baby boy full oh term. Goodness. He was oh. only a few hours old. Wow. Oh, my heart breaks. And, 
I could have been, my doctor told me she wasn't sure if I would have children or not. Mm -hmm. And I knew how it would have uh, really affected me had Mm -hmm. I not had a family. Now we have been blessed with four, which we're very thankful for. (laughs) However, uh, there are many women that never, Mm -hmm. never realize motherhood. And so this book, though you may not, catch it as you're reading the series is basically for that purpose Wow! to to deal with the pain mm-hmm. and yet uh, with God's help to get past that and start looking for the other beautiful things that he does provide in our lives rather than being caught up on that one thing we don't have mm. and and I have seen women go through this, where this has become such a a big part of their life that they really can't appreciate anything else. It's the loss that just holds them back. Yes. Um, So it is my weak attempt of saying, uh, okay, if there must be a reason in God's plan for Mm -hmm. this, look for it. Mm -hmm. Find it and move on. With God's help. I think it's a very strong attempt, not a weak attempt. I think that was a very strong, and it was very, as just a, a reader and a mother reading it, um, you created this this very wonderful character that everyone is so connected to, and to see her go through that was very, you know, for someone who has a child to be connect with someone who is going through those problems. You know, I have girlfriends who are mm-hmm. having a hard time, so it's so great to to read that and to hopefully understand that mindset. Well, thank you for that. The other purpose was to help us who do have families mm-hmm. to be compassionate and understanding mm. for people who might be uh, struggling with this issue. I love that. Right. Um, I loved while reading all these books, we see the sense of community, the theme, and that, you know, also resonates with the show, though you know, this series was based off of. But I, I loved how you write so well the theme of community and everyone getting together during hard times and whatnot. Is is that something that you like to bring out to the world, that message of everyone coming together through struggle? Absolutely. I, I think that is so important. And uh, in our busy, busy age and our computerized age mm-hmm. and all of that goes along with that, I think we were perhaps losing some of that special touch but when tough times come you find that communities do that again they they draw back together and uh, there's still that compassion there when it is needed which is a good thing thank god for that yes but uh it it's so much a part of what uh, we are who we are and what we need that, that we do well to remember and to keep it alive and well. Yeah. Yes. yes. Your your books are an example for me. I'm I'm a father and grandfather, and oh, that's great to hear. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So thank you. I I I, I you know I, I was fortunate, um, and I am fortunate. Um, but your books are something that you know my my grown children can read, my kids could read. Mm-hmm. Like they're, I mean, like, or like teenagers can read. Like it's not, you don't use any major violence or sexual situation or bad words. Like it's, it's, they're still very, and you can get, you really get into the story for the story. Mm -hmm. You don't use any kind of outward modern stuff. I appreciate that comment because I, I was a reader I read and read and read all the time I was growing up. My mom and dad were both readers. And as a young woman, I really uh, was still picking things off the shelf and reading them. And there were so many times that I ended up tossing it in the waste paper basket after the first few pages. (laughs) Right, huh? (laughs) And and I thought, you know, there's got to be an answer to this. Uh, I'm sure there are other fiction readers out there that are looking for something that is clean and upbeat. And yet as a Christian community, we really weren't providing that for many years. And so uh, that was one thing the Lord laid on my heart. There must be, and and I was particularly interested in young women, young gals, and I knew that uh, 
a lot of us like a story with some romance in it, <laughs> yet it doesn't need to be uh, tawdry. And no. mm-hmm. uh, so I, I wanted to express, try to express, that the real essence of love is the commitment rather than the passion. Mm. Oh, that is so and, true. And so I, I thought, well, you know, I, I wasn't happy with what I was finding, and I thought there would be other people that would maybe enjoy something that was wholesome. And uh, so God just laid it on my heart these, that, I try to present something that would be workable for the young readers looking for that. You know, they always say to create something you, that you want, you don't see. I love that. Mm-hmm. That, was that. that was purpose. your purpose. That was your purpose. I love that. Right. Oh, that's so inspirational. Wow. Makes me want to cry. So how do you feel about this, this movie, first TV movie and now series that's based on your world? Well, it has been exciting. It <laughs> it isn't particularly something that I would have sought <laughs> because yep. I have never been a movie buff myself. <laughs> I, I I prefer turning the pages. So, um, but certainly the individuals that uh, I have been uh, meeting since this series has started, Michael Landon Jr. and oh, yes. Brian Bird and oh, the yeah. others oh, yeah. involved have been wonderful people to work with. It's been a real pleasure to um, be a part of this, and it's exciting to see what God can do with uh, the movies. Of course, I'm especially excited because when people see the movies, then they go out and buy the book. (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. (laughs) Uh, That's just a little joke. (laughs) Uh, But, uh, you know, if God can touch hearts through this, I'm all for it. Now, Jeanette, I know this is basically like asking you to pick your favorite child, but our <laughs> our viewers who are who are watching are asking, do you have um, one of like your books that is, is your favorite one that you've written? No, it's like you say. It's like, like, okay, okay. <laughs> you know they are not perfect, but you love them anyway. <laughs> You fall in with the characters oh, as you funny. are writing the books, and yes. they all become very, very special to you <laughs> and all teach you something. That's I've been amazed at how much my characters have taught me through the years. Mm. As you have to uh, gather your thoughts and, and put them in a way that you can present them to other people, uh, you learn a lot. Yeah. You learn a lot about yourself. and. Uh, so it's interesting to see that each one of these characters have had an important role in my own life of stabilizing um, my own views on things. And uh, so certainly they, they become very special. But uh, as I say, I know they're not perfect, <laughs> but they do have a story to tell and a message yes. to bring, and I appreciate that. Do you think you would be friends with Elizabeth? <laughs> you guys would be friends. You think, you think you'd be friends in real life? <laughs> uh, well, you know, uh, Elizabeth and Wynn, the stories in Wynn Calls the Heart, mm-hmm. that's my husband's favorite series of oh. the books that I have written. There you go, folks. So yeah. different, different ones appeal to different uh, yeah. people, yeah. and that is true in life as well. You, your <coughs> friends and associates you relate to, uh, some a little more closely than mm-hmm. others. So, okay. yeah, and we know that you know you you've done this book series that six with the regular, and but then you also because of the success of the show, you're still continuing writing the stories with the Return to the Canadian West series, and we believe that you actually co-write with your daughter. What has that experience been like? Well, Laurel and I had written together before. Uh, there's a book out called Dana's Valley that we wrote together several years back that uh, was a very difficult story to write because we dealt with uh, the a family that had uh, a child uh, with cancer oh. and the struggles that they went through concerning Ooh. that. So it was a hard mm-hmm. story to write, but it's one that uh, a lot of families need to face. Mm-hmm. When Laurel was growing up, she had a friend who 
was from a family where they, the oldest child, and they were all still very young, but the older one had cancer, and the younger one had very serious seizures. So she was caught in between. Jeez. And be, because of necessity, the parents needed to to give their attention to these other two children and their very serious illnesses. And so... What happens to that child? The one in the middle who, through no fault of the parents, right. no fault of her own, but she, she's caught in a situation where there's not a lot of time or attention left to give. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I, I felt this uh, deeply when she was visiting our home at different times. And I thought, what... What happens in a family like that? What does it do to each of the other children? What does it do to the parents when you're you're feeling that you're not fulfilling what that other child needs? Mm -hmm. And so we wrote a book trying to express that. Again, wow. it was our attempt to uh, help a parent be able to forgive themselves and also to make us as friends and family understand and, and try to reach in and help where we could. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very difficult situation. So it was a difficult book to write, but we found that as we were writing that, that uh, actually our, our thoughts are, are so in sync that she could be writing a chapter on Aww. one computer while I was writing on the other, and, and the book just flowed. So writing this series hasn't been that difficult, and Laurel has done a lot of the work because I had already retired when I was asked <laughs> yes. to do this series. <laughs> yeah. So Laurel has done a lot of the work on this. Oh, we were actually approached by the filmmakers oh. to do oh. the series there you go. There and you go. Uh, because they were planning to do the films. And so even though we knew that they were filming at the same time we were writing, the, the stories are still very different because a book uh, is a lot different in the way that you express and tell the story than what a film is. Completely, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a different genre completely. So you, uh, you have to do it in a different way. Uh, in a film, they are showing you things. And uh, in a book, we are telling the story, but we're also able to give all of the feelings behind the actions. Mm -hmm. uh, which gives us a little more, I think, scope, mm -hmm. and we can take a little slower pace. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a different way of presenting the story. And so, they are more concerned about action, so it has to move forward right. more quickly. And yeah. and uh, so, some some things that will work in a book won't work in film, and vice versa. So, uh, so the stories differ quite okay. a bit. Oh, okay. But, uh, we crisscross now and then. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, we could talk to you forever. I thought our viewers are sitting, like writing in. Couldn't you just listen to her chat just all day? Oh, man, just, just stay on the just, like, We hours. all love you so much. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you've talked about being you know, involved with the, the film and whatnot, and also with the television show. And we, we've learned from the creators that you're also very creatively involved and you read over the stories. Um, oh, how much input do you have with the with the character stories and just the show itself. For One Calls the Heart? For One Calls the Heart. For One Calls the Heart. Well, you know, that's very that's interesting awesome. because when I sign a contract with the publishing house, I sign away all rights to anything ah, that can okay. be done. Okay. So these people, there is no legal tie-up with me at all. There's no obligation to even speak to me uh, about any of the things that they do. However, they are such kind, gentle people uh, that they do. And they that. have yeah. uh, asked for a advice. They have allowed me to read scripts. They have been most generous. Wow. And we've been invited out to the film site. Aww. In fact, have another invitation coming up before too long. Aww. They're wonderful, wonderful people. They are. 
Yes. Yeah, it, it's been a real pleasure yeah. to work with them and the actors and actresses as well. It, it's it's great. It's like a second family out Aww. there. And I think as viewers and people who love Wind Calls the Heart, the series, like that's really what brought us mm -hmm. to this. And then this community, it's so great to hear that as a viewer that that exists, you well, know? Yeah, mm -hmm. the Hardy it mm -hmm. extends to you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You started the Hardy movie, yes. so. Yeah. <laughs> You're the original Hardy. Well, it's been yes. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> she is. Yeah, she's the original Hardy. She is. <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah, the Hardys are a wonderful group. Yes, they I are. tell you, they are a very, very special group, and they are such an encouragement to the filmmakers. And uh, it's, uh, I, I'm not even sure if we would be seeing a second three and four if it wasn't for the Hardys. Exactly. Oh, totally agree with that. They had a fantastic influence on it. And that's what Brian Bird was even saying. Like yeah. he was so shocked by this, the how it really was that nothing else out there was like that. Yeah, yeah I feel like it's a return mm -hmm. to they. We're nowadays we've gone so far with all the sex and violence and so much of it and gore and all that. Now we're looking for something that's back to basics. It, when I first saw it, and and also reading your books it reminds me of the Waltons. It reminds <laughs> me of stuff back in the day that was just it was still good stories. And it was wholesome, but it was mm -hmm. still riveting. It was still mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. It was still sad. It's still stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But without all that you stuff. You know, it's a wonderful thing to realize that it can really work without including that. Yes. That there are still enough people out there to make it viable, mm -hmm. to put out a clean book and have it appreciated. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is a real blessing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that... Um, Sometimes we take it for granted that everybody is into the other stuff. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are not. They're they not. are not. We They're... need to remind ourselves that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Right. I agree. So I totally agree with that. it's, yeah, it's, it's a great thing. And I, I think we need to be, as a Christian community, uh, very intentional mm -hmm. at providing that for them. I love that. Yeah. Me too. I totally agree with that. Purpose. This conversation yes. gives me purpose. Oh, You've inspired me. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> You've inspired all of us. Yes, no, definitely. Definitely inspired all the Hardys and whatnot. It's so much to the point that everyone just loves getting together. Yes, just to talk about it. And at the end of 2016 year, the December, um, we had the Hardys reunion. Yes, for reunion part and two. And everyone wants to know, will you be there, Jeanette? I am planning to be. I've oh been invited God. to be. Oh, look, I can meet you. Oh, my God. We're going to be there. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> So uh, we're hoping that nothing happens to interfere with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God willing, right? Exactly. Yes. God willing, yes. yes. Oh, how exciting. Yes. We had a wonderful time last year. Aww. It, was, oh. it was great, and it was so nice to meet so many people. And uh, certainly Brian is a big Hardy's fan. Yes. yes. So he yes. loves these events. And, uh, it, yeah, it was very nice last year. Oh, good. So... She's coming, yeah. you guys. She's hey, coming. viewers, she's coming. <laughs> they she's were gonna, asking. She's yeah. going to come. We're all going to be there. We're going to have a good time. Yes. yes. No, I didn't catch that. I said, I said we're all going to be there. We're going to have a good time. We're going to be there. You're going to be oh, there. Oh, yes. We will have, have a good time. Good time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Last year, it rained and rained, and we still had a good yeah, time. That's fine. It's a little rain. It's a little rain. <laughs> yeah. Um, is, yeah. With these stories, it, they you know they resonate with everybody to this day, and they'll last even before you know, later on in life and whatnot. Is there like one storyline that you're just really proud of that you've written, or like it doesn't even have to be in this book series, but like any of your books that you're just like so proud of that you wrote? You know that that's a difficult question because. I, I hardly know how to answer it because I feel so much that it's more God's doing than mine mm. that I don't know that I can actually say I feel proud, I feel humbled, I feel honored. I, I feel that God had a purpose. Uh, I hear from readers all around the world, I could not have in any way even imagined that rather than accomplished it without his doing. So I, I feel that um, any time, uh, and I have 
had a lot of letters from readers over the years, and so many of them just share their heart Mm -hmm. and talk about how a certain incident in a book has brought them to a place of uh, dealing with some situation in their own life that has been painful or moving them forward or giving them new insight. Any time a ministry takes place, it's God. Yep. It's yeah. not me. Yep. That's his work. And uh, you can't orchestrate that. You can't plan that. You, uh, it's, it's what happens when the spirit moves in and speaks to the heart. So I really have no right for pride. Okay. Uh, as I say, it's a humbling <laughs> experience, the way God has used the book to touch hearts of people. Wow. Uh-huh. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, Jeanette, thank you so much for taking the time out to come on our little show. Yes, we appreciate it. We really appreciate it so much. Well, thank you for calling, and God bless. God bless you, too. Trust. All right. Well, you take care, and many more reads in the future. Thank Thank you. you. We hope to see you soon. Not just mine, but (laughs) a lot of good authors. There's a lot of good out there. Yes, there's a lot of good authors out there. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank Thank you, Jeanette. Jeanette. Thank you so much. You take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Oh my gosh, isn't she cute? Oh I my gosh. I thought we should end it on that moment. It was just so I know, it was perfect. Like, how do you get better than that? I know. I was like, uh, like yes, I, yes no, no, I, I just, I mean, she is just. Perspective, she, right? She is oh the best. Goodness. I mean, and she spoke, she she dropped the mic. She spoke <laughs> it to me. Yep. She did she, drop the mic. She nothing else spoke to it say. to me. Yeah, I don't know what to say on that I got one. nothing. She, she was yep. good. So, thank you to her. How do we live up to that? Oh my gosh. Thank you to Jeff Masters, who is the leader of this Book Circle Online Network, who put that together for us. Amazing. Jeff is the best, and we're so happy, and thanks for Marissa and them working it all out. Yep. So we're just so happy. That's so great. Thanks, James and Maria, for being here. And if I <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all like, Maria, I tried to talk you into the... I know, you know I know. I'm trying, you guys. I am trying, trying. I promise. That was amazing, though. Yes, that was, that was amazing. I just feel I feel just warm inside. I love Ooh. it. I know. That's a good way warm to describe it. Just, yeah, I feel warm. I feel good. It feels good. Okay. And I need, I need it that right now. Oh, um, everybody does. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> now we get the book. We got we get the next like, little time to talk about the book a little bit because this book was good. The book is called When Breaks the Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> I almost this up. When Breaks the Dawn. When Breaks the Dawn. He wants um, to say When the Bow Breaks. I know. Yeah. I just, he want to say that. It's the wrong yeah, thing. It's a movie. One. That's a lullaby. It's a lull- <laughs> it is a lullaby. Oh, it's a lullaby. And actually, it's a movie that's coming. It's movie's coming. Right. Okay, okay, that's keep, what you're thinking. Yep. Of. I keep thinking. So oh, When okay. Breaks the Dawn, the third in the series. <laughs> um, and... Just overall thoughts, we'll, we'll read the summary in a second, but overall thoughts, I liked it even better than the second book. You know, go ahead, Marissa. I was like, yeah, I yeah. wholeheartedly agree with you. Yeah. I think the second one, it was still, it, it felt like it was a transition book. Yeah. Yes, now they it does, especially. Moving. Yes. They set up a lot of things, which is still great to, to yeah. you know, see, um, I almost called her Jeanette, <laughs> 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 to see Elizabeth's life, like yeah. that day in and how she just trans, you know, um, transcended to everything yep. and, and really just like tried to set a new life mm-hmm. but this is now she's settled yes. mm-hmm. she knows more people she's mm-hmm. just living her day and That's now perfect. she she has bigger issues bigger mm-hmm. personal issues mm-hmm. that she's tackling mm-hmm. which i Really enjoyed. Well, oh, this book, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you, that's probably you say. If, the second one now feels like a transition book. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Totally. This one, she's in. We're, we're covering three or four years now of her life. And no. so read the read the um, the summary. Well, do you want to hear what my thoughts? Oh are? yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Your thoughts. Are sorry. <laughs> no. Read the summary. Do my thoughts matter? Okay. Yeah, they no, I'm do just matter. Of course. No, 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 no. no. I just uh, quickly. Um, you know, I was sad a lot in this book. I was really oh, sad, oh, yes. and oh, especially okay. being a mom, oh, yeah. my heart hurt a lot in this book. Being a father but I too. think I think Ooh. the purpose of this book, just like Jeanette had said, is to really learn how to overcome hardship mm-hmm. and your own struggles with your faith. I think is something that everybody deals with. Why me? Why this? And you know, it's it's like Jeanette just said, you know, it's not about me. It's this humbling experience. So that's that to me, like, I was sad a lot reading this book. Yeah, I, I thought my mother, because you know, I just yeah. lost my, my brother. So I thought about her right now. Even though he's a grown man, it was doesn't 48, matter. doesn't matter. Your, your kids are always your babies. Yeah, I can't even imagine losing my children or grandchildren. No. So, I mean, so, so reading this, I finished the book right before this happened. So <laughs> it was kind of funny. It was just like, oh, this is really interesting to me because I thought about the book as I'm putting together yeah. a summary. They're like, oh, it's kind of interesting, kind of it's a weird parallel thing for me. Yeah. So, but to kind of like start out, um, just a little bit with the summary. So 
we started out where we left off. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's really, I was kind of surprised. I thought maybe yeah. they would have skipped a beat. But, <laughs> yes. I mean, Nimi and Ian, Ian were coming back. They returned to town. <laughs> and, you know, really established uh, the relationship of Elizabeth and Nimi yeah. and how close they were. And um, we go through a few years of their lives. Like we said, that book was a transitional book. So in this one, they didn't have to explain, yeah. like, the the winner, the hardship of the winner, exactly. Because yeah. we already know about it. About it yeah. And in this book, Elizabeth starts a school which is her passion, which is so, this school is so, I can't wait to talk about that, just the, the, the trajectory of like the school, yes. and um, deals with the struggle of trying to start a family of her own, which we, you know, was the biggest um, through yes. line through this oh, whole yes. thing, wait, wait. and actually deals with motherhood in a few different ways, and without actually having children of her own, which I know, yeah. Marissa, mm-hmm. you can speak to because yes. children, oh, even yes. if you don't yeah. have them, even if you don't give birth uh, to them, they're your, no, children. they're your children. And yeah. um, and actually, we see her struggles, like we mentioned, with her faith and how to overcome hardship. And also, we learned a lot about her love, and she learned a lot about her love for her husband, Wynn. So I think yeah. that was ultimately the the most important pieces to this book. Yeah. yeah, and I think there were a lot of other just more humanistic themes within. Elizabeth and an adult themes as well, but like the feeling of loneliness, mm-hmm. the feeling that she didn't have people to turn to or family and whatnot. Language and then barriers. Language barriers with her students. There was like the situations she was dealing with in this book were more adult, more realistic, and she yeah. faced them more like adults. And we were, in the first two books, we were always talking about she's so young, she doesn't know how to handle it properly. I think she was handling it better in this she book. She seemed less whiny to me. Remember I had a problem with the last <laughs> book? This book, she seemed much more like, okay, I'm handling stuff. Yeah. Said yeah. Handling, handling stuff. stuff. Handling stuff. She was, like you said, she was handling it. But also, mm-hmm. like, jealousy, too. But it, it came yes. from a realistic yes. place. Yes, I agree. Yeah. So that I understood. Mm-hmm. I, but, agree with, I agree with that. Um, and I, 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 my, one of my favorite moments, I'm just going to skip ahead to one of my favorite moments. Was, how dare well, you, James? I know, how dare I. The young deaf Indian. Because I want to talk about it because it's, you know, about the school and everything, the young yeah. deaf Indian. Yes, yeah. Yes. Who could really draw. I love drawing the animals. It was really good. And she had to communicate with him that mm-hmm. way. Um, and I just thought, because this book was about them setting up a school, her and me right. setting up a school and what that means, the language of the Indian. She's a teacher. She needs so, students to teach. I did enjoy that book, yeah. that that part, because it showed that she's finally doing something that she really wanted to. She moved out, and like she was, she changed her life for her husband. Yes. But now she's changing her life for herself. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I enjoyed that mm-hmm. because I loved how yes we had the language barrier, but her heart was still there, and mm-hmm. she was trying to teach these kids. The fact that it started very big, but then it dwindled down to a mere handful. Mm-hmm. But the fact that she like focused so much on them and actually truly genuinely wanted to teach them mm-hmm. and just yes, the Indian child who had to who had the creative skills of mm-hmm. drawing, but it's like, let's take this talent and enhance it. Right. I love that. Well and I think even on top of that, the the overall lesson of teach one and they will yeah. teach others. So that yeah. was one thing that you know, I think in this time period it was tough for like maybe the Indian community to be to to be open to a white person coming mm-hmm. in and being like, I really don't want you to come change my life. Like, we're, right. we're, yeah. we are happy. Right. And even though they really respected the Mounties and the help and this and that, but this was their culture and they were proud of it and they didn't want to change mm-hmm. it. But, I, you know, with Elizabeth's intention of just, you know, this is the, the world. We're, the, we're all kind of coming together. You guys need to learn about the world. So her teaching Susie and t- mm-hmm. seeing that result, that is so of so much value which i think was a lesson for elizabeth that you don't necessarily even if you didn't teach all like i think they started out with 30 yeah. um you know you get down to a few that's the most important thing. i want to ask you too because you guys are the women of the, of the house here <laughs> um I mean, I mean could you see yourself I mean, this is, I mean obviously this is modern times and you're married or whatever but just could you see yourself giving up for your husband for a little bit and then try and discuss i mean how does that work because back then it was it was expected the woman will follow the man. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, nowadays it's not expected anymore. Nowadays, well, most cultures not nowadays. I mean, could you guys? I mean, could you guys imagine yourselves in that situation as you're reading these books? Could you imagine? I think it'd be very hard. I think it'd be really hard because I think women nowadays they're more conditioned to be more independent, right? Um, and it's more socially acceptable these days to mm-hmm. be headstrong, do whatever it is for your life to that if it makes you more fulfilled mm-hmm. you don't really need a man to have yeah. a successful life yeah. yeah and i think today would be acceptable back then and like growing up in a generation that really only knows that yeah. type of mentality it is hard for me to think hey it's back hard. then yeah. women were more oppressed yeah. and the fact that yes they had opinions but they didn't really have a say they didn't have a voice i mean that's, they couldn't vote they couldn't sad. do anything yeah, yeah it's always wondered today like if you if you met you know you meet a man or whatever and you like 
you love them and you fall in love and they, they have to move to New York. It's like, that's, mm-hmm. those are choices people still make today. Like, do you give up where you're, what you're doing in L.A. to go to New York and maybe try to... It's almost relatable. This book, is, to me, is relatable because it's it kind of like, yeah. mm-hmm. that happens. Or you have a long relationship yeah. and then even the, even the man may have to switch up and come yeah. to and, like, give up what they have where they are. And honestly, I think that depends on whatever partner that you have yeah. in your yeah. life. Whatever you're yeah. deciding to what you've decided to give up or compromise on. Yeah. It really depends on who you're with and, and who you are as a person. Right. It's different yeah. for everybody. Ooh, maybe, maybe that's think a about tough that. one. No, maybe yeah. think about when reading this, again, reading these books, and they're written you know, 20, 30 years ago, written about 100-something years ago. I can relate. I still was thinking, well, how would I feel in a situation? Like, what, well, would yeah. I, what would I do? I'm going to move to this, kind of this part of the, the, of the states that you didn't know about, and you're trying to learn a different language. I mean, it's just kind of yeah. relatable. I think it's very, very relatable, folks. Is. And this book really conveys that. They're really, she's really good at describing in these books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This book, too, she's good at describing mm-hmm. situations, and you get it. You mm-hmm. feel, I feel like I'm there. Well, and um, just, yeah. yes, sorry, mm-hmm. and I was, I want to yeah, kind of interrupt yeah. to piggyback yeah. on yeah, what please. we were talking about, because our viewer was saying, would you be able to do, oh, she, like, follow, yeah, for, and, and be in that isolation? Um, that's a great question, because, you know, we think of, yeah, mm-hmm. what I, could I follow my husband to New York? Well, yeah, I can still sort of pursue <laughs> yeah, this you, career yeah, in yeah, New York, yeah. mm-hmm. um, but, like, an isolation, like, what if he needed to go to Africa, or, yeah, like, sure. in a place in Africa that's, like, a, you know, tri yeah. place that's a complete culture shock that doesn't yeah. have you know what we have doesn't have yeah. anything that we're used to i'm like oh my god i need like mascara to look presentable to society and you don't have that so yeah. i i i think i would you know i think it would do anything for my husband but i think it would be hard yeah, sure. because i love my career so much <laughs> <laughs> and you guys love her in a career too right <laughs> um lisa says she followed her husband to another state left her career became a mom and she's very happy right now she made well lisa yeah. we love you i, I do lisa. Lisa. I, love, I love lisa lisa's love been great lisa. to me lisa too lisa is amazing to everybody yes. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i agree i think it it really depends on who you are as a person and who your partner is in this relationship yeah. and what you're willing yeah. to give up or give in you know yeah but sorry james i was interrupted because oh, i wanted to go oh, back to that but yeah so yeah. talking about how she really yeah. does make you feel like you're you're there. in her writing she does make oh, you feel like you're there, there. the dog fight I I was, oh my god i couldn't so i totally yeah. forgot about that yes, i was kip, so worried kip, for kip i, I was know. like you go dog because kip, kip, kip came to his own too came to his i wrote down here kip like we came to his own this book my heart raced i'm not kidding i know i love animals like my scrabble i was like my scrabble oh my god reading i was like is he okay is it yes i kind of felt bad for the other dog too well yeah of course yeah. <laughs> dogs but i was like kim would be okay if that's their dog it'd be okay so mm-hmm. i wrote that in our, 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 our outline and he came to his own i see this book too he kind did. of a little bit yeah. <laughs> the husky, kim i love him i, I want to too. he kind of grew up too see everybody grows up everybody yeah. grows up i'm trying to grow up <laughs> <laughs> if I grow some up days already, harder than others <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we should talk about i mean the infertility thing of course obviously that's and now hearing <sighs> her talk it kind of gives a little backstory to what she was trying to do. For yeah. Her. Now I got a different perspective on the book a little bit. Miscarriages. Um, yes, mis- yeah, miscarriage. Oh, I mean, that's, you guys. That must be hard. I mean, anybody's miscarriage must be really hard. Or a b- give birth to, a, to to term death also. That's, I think, well, I don't know which yeah, one's harder, either, to be either, honest I don't with either, you. I don't but I think the longer you are pregnant, the yeah. harder it well, is. I'm but sure. I think ultimately, a mother's, having gone through it, yeah, um, through it a yeah. mother's connection is at conception. Like the second mm. you find out the Second, you find out you're pregnant. I'm sure. The second there's two lines on that test, okay. like you are connected, well, connected. Well, I'll tell you yeah. when. Well, my second daughter was uh, was when she, we had now she was when we found she was be she was, was it, gestating. When we found she was pregnant, <laughs> I uh, I'm like get scientific all of a sudden. Um, I fell in love with her. I said I fell in love with you since I found out. I knew it. Yeah. I just knew it. I said as soon as I found out, I was like that's it. I'm sold. Yeah. So when she came out, I was just like she was two weeks late. Oh my god, my son was, was six weeks early. They're like, hello? I was like, come on, get out. <laughs> yours, yours was like, I'm ready. I was five and a half weeks ago to come with a twin, but yours, I was ready to come out. Yeah. But she took, like, two weeks, I was like, but then she was finally here and like eight pounds, 11 ounces. Um, huge oh, baby. She was a huge baby. Like, you know, <laughs> so I was like, oh my god, I love all of you. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, almost like you. Was, but mothers, because you guys are the ones who give birth, literally give birth. I'm sure you feel it now. But even as a father, I, I felt it. Like, I was in love with her before she yeah. came. Yeah. So imagine happened. dealing with the infertility. Yeah. I mean, so I, I mean, as a woman, I think any woman, even yeah. if you have kids or you don't have kids, you think of this like as, as mm-hmm. a woman who wants kids. Yeah. I think it would be a tough a, one to read. It would be very Ooh. well. I think it would be very hard to be going through that. But I think if you're reading this book and you're having those yes. problems, you feel like you're not alone. Okay, you know, okay, I yeah. think when you're reading it, you're like, this is the, I'm dealing with the struggle too. You know, other people have my same emotions and feelings and struggles and 
you know, the biggest thing was her struggle in faith. She was just like, why? I'm a good person. I got you angry. Know? I got angry after, because after the Susie, you know, she take care of Susie, and then and then the baby came. Samuel, yeah. yeah. And then that, all oh, that happened. And it was like, I got angry. Like, yeah. see, I was reading, I was like, when that same thing happened, I was like, this is, this is not fair. Like, yeah. I was completely like, this is not fair. I legitimately didn't think that was going to happen. Me neither. Did you? Yeah, no. No. That, that came out of We talked about the other day. Like, I, just, I was like, like I got um, I, that's how I, that's I, what I, I said. I, I, I was like, what? Yeah. What? I was, like, but I was what? angry. I was angry. I was like, this this is not my this guy. I want to almost want to go back, read it again, make it a different outcome. <laughs> I'm gonna go back two pages. And you see like what those happens. books where you're like, choose a different <laughs> ending. Exactly. Page five forty two. Okay, I'm going to that one. I want that ending instead. I was angry. I think I mean most people, if not everyone, would would have been angry with that result. But yeah. I'm I'm glad it kind of came out more positive with yeah. another child. Yeah. But I think it's not just with pregnancy, but other like I find it very related in the fact that when people want a certain thing in life then they're just surrounded by everyone and it's like, mm-hmm. yeah and it just constantly reminds you of the thing that you want the right. most mm-hmm. and having nimi always being pregnant and having children yeah, sure. and everyone in the family. village i know yeah. i was having babies and it was like, <laughs> oh Lord, the, every family that yeah. she was surrounded with was always having children and she yeah. yet she couldn't it's it just Again, that stirred up that realistic jealousy mm-hmm. within mm-hmm. her that I uh, I completely oh, f- understood completely, where it came from. Completely understood. I think that, I, and I've had, had girlfriends who have dealt with this battle, yeah. and they it was hard for me when I was pregnant because they uh, legitimately didn't even want to be around me, oh, and it wasn't, and I, I I didn't. It's hard for me to understand, but it, yeah. I couldn't understand. Like yeah. understand those emotions, and I, it made me feel bad. I'm like, I didn't. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm pregnant. But, yeah. But you know, I've I've had relatives go through it too, and it's it's, it's a hard thing. It, and my family were very fertile. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's usually never a problem. But then we have members of my some cousins of mine who aren't fertile. Yeah. It didn't work out, and they kept seeing us having kids. Yeah, but you get, yeah, and you also have to remember this is a different time too. Yeah. Like there really weren't other many options no, available to her. Right. Like, even consider adoption, but even that was hard. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, I don't so. think there's any, like, legal things in, in terms of in adoption place. at, this, at no. that time because Wynn was like, I, we gotta give, this is his kid, like, right. we can't keep him. It's, She's like, are you kidding me? He <laughs> left. Right. You know? Yeah, and oh, so, so, so I, I know, think I know, just, I know. it's just, there's, there was nothing that, like you said, that you could do. And But it does show that Marissa, something we talked about in the beginning of this, is that it doesn't matter if you do conceive a child or not, a child can be yours yeah. and you can mm-hmm. love them like you did. Yeah. And I think I loved that they added this in. And it sort of thinks, I think of Brian Bird. Um, because he's, yes. I mean, he, yeah, yeah, I know we all love him, yeah. Papa yeah, Hardy. Him. Mm. Yeah, Papa Hardy. Yeah. But I loved that. I thought of you when I was reading that, that it was just Aww. like, because I would love to adopt one day. And I just think that there's, mm. Yeah, like I'm reading it. I'm like, adoption's available, but back then, I yeah. don't know. It's yeah. a different, it's a different yeah. time. But like, it is possible, and I think it's like, as much as you want something, that's how hard you have to work for it. Yeah, and like, that's I'm, true. I'm glad that she actually had that sit down talk with when the fact that yes. she wanted to get pregnant, the fact that yeah. she actively went to a doctor just to check maybe biologically she couldn't, you know. So like, she's actively making steps mm-hmm. to have this come to fruition, mm-hmm. and. Like, I'm rooting for her. I think yes. she's going to get pregnant in the next one. Don't tell me if she does, you guys. <laughs> we haven't read it before yet. Don't tell yet. me. We have read it yet, not so, read yes. it, but we're going to read it. They say Don't when, it. When when broke down, that was even more heartbreaking, yes. Yeah. Because yes. us men, some of us are tuned into our women, and we do, and we're tuned into it, and we do feel. Well, yeah. We get a bad rap sometimes, I think. And sometimes it's, it's totally necessary. But, but yeah. in many cases, men do, because we don't give birth. So we don't have the innate mm-hmm, instinct, mm-hmm. but we do know what we do feel. We we do we are empathetic and we do feel. And mm-hmm. how sweet was when with Susie? Yeah. I melted. And it was so when she <laughs> yeah. said that he was like Jesus yes. and he cried, I was just like, because I think that's that's one thing yeah. you know for him that really he is one of those people from reading this book that he is all about actions. Yes, he's not going to tell you great, I do this, I do this. Man and because of his faith, I think that's what he really mm-hmm. strives to be like Jesus. Like I don't need a thank you. I I I'm here because I want to help people, mm-hmm. and that's why. Elizabeth knows that she wants to stick this, this out with him. Like when he was saying, we can go somewhere where there's more, um, you know, it's more of a city and da da da. And she's just like, but that you wouldn't be happy. Yeah. That's yeah. his purpose. See, men, we're taught to be doers. We're not taught to sit in our emotions. We're taught to take, to take care of, be caretakers, yeah. take care of, mm-hmm. handle this. Always want to fix things. Always want to fix it. That's something we just, we can't, and to our judgment sometimes, we have to learn how to be emotional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We do. I still struggle with it sometimes. I'm in my late 40s. I'm still trying to be emotional sometimes. And because we're, because we're taught to just take care of it. What do you need? We'll handle that. When a lot of women just want to, we want to feel their feelings. Yes. 
I would agree with good, that. It's a great thing. We should oh, feel yeah. our feelings. It's realistic. You it's have realistic. to go through it. Um, I did like that moment with Win and Susie because it just showed that how great of a father oh, of he can of be. Of course, of course. Yeah. And it just reminded me of the actual television yes. show when we had yeah. the scene with Jack <laughs> and Cody. Yes. Yeah. And even though Cody's not his biological father, yeah. Son. Exactly. It means like he can still be a good dad and still oh, teach about life kind of Cody, and just yes. like, you know, just yeah. apply that no matter what time of year or what, what year it is. You yeah. know, it's just so relatable with everybody. Yeah. I know. It's just, it's just, yeah. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> like, I know. Yeah. It's just so good. This book was so much more um, just dramatic in some ways and it had a lot more action in this one. I mean, just every time, at least there's a new chapter. It was more action packed. It was yeah. more action packed. In terms of just, I mean, just stuff happening. I'm right. like, not meaning like action, like they're running on buildings well, or anything. Well, but yeah, but the last one was very much day to day, so we could learn yeah. about um, how her life was. Yeah. Like you said, transitional book. That was a great. I know, that's a great, that's yeah. a great way of putting it. It was kind of like that. Mm -hmm. It's and, a lot about healing in this book. Yeah. Because yeah. we even see, yeah. you know, the community, they get sick at some points, but yes. they're all coming together mm -hmm. and overcoming. Again, that that sense of community. Mm -hmm. That's what I think you put. You brought up the question you asked about that too. About these, everything is so community based, which you know I love. Any the village, the right. village, village. And all about that. Um, but yeah, this book's the same way. When something would happen, you would hope everybody. I mean, when I was a kid, my block was my community. Yeah. You know, when one person told adult told you to stop, you stopped. <laughs> you didn't say you're not my mother. It's yeah. Like, you, everybody, when an adult talked to you, mm -hmm. or if you did something wrong, the adults talked. I tell my mm. my child my son I'm like whoever told you not to do it you listen to them like I tell people they could dis discipline my child because if they're over at someone's house and they yeah. tell them not to I'm like they make the rules here no right yeah and right. we're all about rules yes I mean, we're rule followers <laughs> sorry I don't know if that's bad but we are <laughs> no, that's great you can break them sometimes but you know <laughs> they have to learn them as the kids need that I, structure I thought, structure trust me I I, you know, I know but you know we see that with Susie in this yeah, because yeah. we learn about the the Indian community where they're really like yes. You know, they are a community. They are a mm -hmm. village. They share and all of these things. But one thing that Susie, I thought was so interesting, she's like, I did not steal. And she was learning about stealing yes. and things like that, too. And I just, I really loved the time with Susie. I think that was probably my favorite time in the book. It was a good time. Because it was yeah. very happy. Yes, <laughs> it was I thought, a, no, really. It was such a happy, <laughs> I knew it was going to end. But it was just really, when she left, I was like, I was legitimately sad. Yeah. But that was probably one of my favorite. Yeah, she was good. But it, I feel like there was a lot of lessons in that, you know? There are. Did you like yeah. the conversation about people taking things? Yeah, we, yes, we, yeah, we just talked about yeah. that. Yeah. So we did like that conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, we need more of that community. I, to I totally agree with that. And I'm trying to create my own here and there, but you know, <laughs> crazy out there. Well, that's what life's yeah. all about. I mean, yeah. living in a big city, I, I oh, have yeah. often talked to, pe talk to people about this, and they're like, well, how do you find, like, happiness in a, in a big city don't you feel lonely and I it was really when mm. I found my circle like I found my yes. tribe yes. and uh, like my mom friends we call us our we're a mom <laughs> tribe okay. you know yeah. and so that's we're all there for each other and I will yeah. tell you we are there for each other yeah. and yeah. that's just when you find that you that's happiness yeah. you know I found it recently so much, trust me I know right um, and it's one of those things where yeah in big cities we forget they were all spread out everybody you could be anonymous you can fall into the wayside whatever so you have to really look for it. Mm -hmm. If you want a community, you can find it. You just have to really look for it and really discern who you want in your community, first of all. Well, yeah. And yeah. then, and then <laughs> find it. But you found it. It's just easier in smaller towns. And I miss the Midwest and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, uh, yeah. in these big, we all, we all know. But here, it's just you have to find it. And you can, you can find it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this book, it was in the books. So book it's about surrounding people that you want to be with. Yes. So, people. Yeah, yeah like-minded people. Well, and then you get back what you put out too. I agree. You yeah. know? I totally agree. Yeah. I, I like that these books are still really talking about the Indians because they're in the, yeah. they're the Northwest. She's not shying away from that whole, mm -hmm. about their way of life. Because remember the medicine women? She's thinking about, like, go to a medicine woman? That, yeah. That was like, <laughs> I kind of wanted her to. I was, Me too. I was like, like what's she going to do? Yeah, because I mean, it's like they have their own, I mean, I, I have family members who are Indian. I know there's a whole thing there. Mm -hmm. Just like in some in Chinese, there's, there's Western medicine, Eastern medicine. There's mm -hmm. a whole different way of stuff. But I like that they talked about that because they had their own way of life before white folks came in. Right. right. Indians had a whole way of life. They were living mm -hmm. their lives out there like it's golden. Um, and yeah. and they completely, I like that these books, and this book went into some more with her with the infertility thing. I was like, oh, they brought up medicine woman in this book. Like, oh, interesting. Okay. Will she go to Calgary for this or will she do the medicine woman? Mm -hmm. I was like, very interesting. They brought both sides up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But she didn't, ultimately didn't go, but. That's kind of all comes that was that too. turned into temptation. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> temptation, and she shouldn't deal with the evil. Yes, yeah. yes, she has to deal with that. But I thought it was very interesting that they brought they're, they're still continually adding in 
the Indian stuff to it because yeah. it was pretty prevalent. Yeah. I think it's a very time. interesting culture. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting culture yeah. too. Yeah. And I, I liked how she made that clear decision, like, and she was actually tormented with yeah. that because she was so desperate. But like, mm -hmm. people do things when they're desperate and they're not mm -hmm. really thinking rationally. Mm -hmm. And she's very emotional right now. Temptation so, like, is a real thing. I'm glad that she she had a conscious yeah. and and like she knew right from wrong. So. Mm -hmm. She did. I said I'm liking Elizabeth again. I didn't, I wasn't too happy with her last time, but I like her this this book. Yeah, I fell for this book. So, well, you like her in Wind Calls the Heart. I do. <laughs> I'm just kind of, I'm a kind of reader. I follow through the, the, the through lines. The first one I liked her. This one, the last one was like, eh. Now I like her again. I feel for her and I'm back to rooting for her again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, yes. I think there's some moments where, I don't know, if part of me felt, I think because I couldn't put myself in that mm -hmm. situation, but where it was almost actually hurtful for she for her to be like, I was really mad at God and this and that. Like to actually, but I think what was important about that is, I think people sometimes think that and don't say it or they they're too scared yeah. to really say it, but that is how they are yeah. really feeling. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Why me? And it's hard to step outside of those emotions yes. and, you know, look at the overall picture, which is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Dealing with hardships like that right. and overcoming. Like geographically and emotionally yes. and financially. I mean, all that yeah. stuff. I mean, that's just some stuff. <laughs> so, that's just some stuff. That's some stuff. Like, I, 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 the best I can say it. So, Marissa, do we have... Do the, do the, yeah, way. go for it. Okay. So, you guys, we have a giveaway. Woo! Yes. Like Woo! Um, it, is, it is the uh, it's the Canadian West, the newer series, Return correct? Return to the Canadian, Canadian West. West. And it's six books in that one, right? Three books. Oh, three. That's right. Three. That's right. Three books. And, mm -hmm. and they were graciously were given to us to give away to one of you Yay! guys out there. Yep. Um, and so, the, the thing was you had to go on to Amazon and actually write a review. I do. I'm mean, actually on Amazon. <laughs> I know. I was like, Amazon, good. One breaks You're down. welcome, Amazon. One breaks down. I'm talking about that. I'm, 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 I'm looking right at it. Uh, so, we guys, so how many winners do we have? We have two. We have two, you guys. A little surprise for you guys. We had said only one, but we love you, Hardy, so much. We're giving two. So, the two people who are who have won the Canadian West, Return to Canadian West series. I can't do it. I'm like trying to do a drum roll. Lori Pearson. <laughs> Whoa, Lori! And Jeanette what? MSU. I, I know you're in here, uh, but you want to type, that's how you typed in here. So you guys are our winners. And they are diehard. You, you guys are diehards. And you guys are both in here. Yes, Lori they Pierce. are. I've seen both right, of them. They yeah. both are in here. Congratulations. So. Congratulations, you guys. Okay, so what so. should they do now? So what they need so to do So what did is, they say? Okay, oh. so. <laughs> I was like, let's, let's read the next place. Okay, so. Um, oh, this was, oh, this is going to keep itself about me. <laughs> <laughs> so Lori wrote, she gave five stars, and she wrote, Marissa... Serafini, Maria Provenzano, and James Lott Jr. absolutely rock these book discussions. Aww. We hearties love the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jeanette MSU said, five stars, love the book circles on the When Calls to Heart books. James, Maria, and Marissa are so much fun. Oh my gosh, Aww. we love you guys so much. We love you, hearties. You make our days. When I see your tweets, I seriously just get so oh, happy. Too. Oh, me too. Yes. But you guys are complete. I said, seriously, I'll start crying again. You guys completely have Aww. overwhelmed me completely with it, continuously sending me prayers and love and funny memes and and all kind of stuff i just it's it makes my makes it's made my two or three weeks yeah. um so what you can do is it's not what you can do go to my fan book page i know you guys are fans of me james Lott, on, on twitter facebook, on oh, facebook, facebook. facebook. <laughs> and private message me your address and we will send it out to you Yes. That's what we'll do. So it's James Lodging on Facebook. I think I think both of you guys are already following me on my on my fan yeah. page. Yeah. And so. if you have any problems with that, you always are checking your yeah. Twitter too. Yeah, check my Twitter too. James Lodge Jr. everywhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you can DM me that too. I think I'm following but I think I'm following both of you too, so that you can do that. If not, I will follow you. But any of those two, send us your address so we can send in those books. And thanks to was it uh, uh, Hallmark Channel that did who did this for us? Yes, it, it was oh, the, it thank was you the to Hallmark. It was Hallmark and the publishing company yes. wow. for Jeanette Oaks book See? series. So, so thank you to them for Hallmark, providing that for us. Ha they yeah. love the Hardys. Yes, let me tell you. <laughs> well, the Hardys, you guys yeah. work it out. So we yes. love you guys very much. You work it out. You yes. work it out. Well, thank you so much, you guys. So this is book three discussion. We had Jan uh, Jeanette Oak on here, Marissa and Maria here with me, of course. Well, we're going to do book four. We just have made an announcement yet. We'll make our announcement like we always do. What's the name of book four? Oh, my God. Here we go. Take <laughs> when safe. comes the spring? Oh my god. We did that. We did this every single time. 
<laughs> just every single you time. You guys, we was never good. know the names of the books. If you guys know the name of the book, then we're James still thinks this one is Win the Bow Wow. <laughs> I do think it's, it's still not. It's not. Is it when it comes to hope spring? Springs no. New. Hope Springs, springs new. new. That's right, because we said this, we were Again. wrong. Yeah. Is that the word hope and no. I should know hope it? Yes. Hope Springs New. Hope Springs New. new. Hope springs I know because I also have that one and I was looking at it this morning. <laughs> So, <laughs> Hope Springs New. Okay, okay, I just see it right now. And, okay, um, so we'll we'll do our special announcement we usually do, and we'll let you know when the next Book Circle Online discussion happens. Yes. You ladies, tell them where they can find you on social media. Um, you can find me at Maria Provenzano on Twitter, and um, you guys, I'm going to be on Home and Family tomorrow. I shot today. It airs tomorrow, um, 10 o'clock, and I would love if you guys watched. I did a really cute, okay. colorful <laughs> DIY. Uh, I did also a chic way, so I'm not going to tell you what it is, even though I kind of posted something on my Instagram already. <laughs> but um, but watch tomorrow. If you, love, if you love Home and Family, I would love it if you guys watched. Watch I it. always watch you on Home and Family. I yes. know you do, and you're so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Serafini TV. And um, many of you guys actually uh, listen to my radio show or listen to my podcast, The Super Organizer Show with James Law Jr., which is every Friday at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. 10 a.m. <laughs> 6 a.m. I'm up that early. Woo! 10 a.m. 6 a.m. time. And you can find it on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Speaker, and Stitcher.com, my radio show. And you guys have been so great about it. I'm James Law Jr. You can follow me at James Law Jr. And we'll see you guys <laughs> next time. We love you guys. Yay, we Bye, love hearties. you guys. Bye, hearties. Mwah. Mwah. From managing editor Jason Squamata, executive producers Maria Menounos, Phil Svitek, and Kevin Undergaro, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Book Circle Online. For more discussion, go to bookcircleonline.com. And if you have comments, questions, or book title suggestions, write us at info at bookcircleonline.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this is Book Circle Online. BCO, join the circle. Um, I love while well, reading all these books, we see the sense of community, the theme, and that, you know, also resonates with the show that, you know, this series was based off of. But I, I loved how you write so well the theme of community and everyone getting together during hard times and whatnot. Is, is that something that you like to bring out to the world, that message of everyone coming together through struggle? Absolutely. I, I think that is so important. And uh, in our busy, busy age and our computerized age and all of that goes along with that i think we were perhaps losing some of that special touch but when tough times come you find that communities do that again they they draw back together and uh, there's still that compassion there when it is needed which is a good thing thank god for that yes but uh it it's so much a part of what uh, we are, who we are, and what we need that, that we do well to remember and to keep it alive and well. Yeah. Yes. yes. Your your books are an example for me. I'm I'm a father and grandfather, and oh, that's great to hear. <laughs> yes, thank you. So thank you. I I I, I you know I I was fortunate, um, and am fortunate. Uh, but your books are something that, you know, my my grown children can read, my kids could read. Mm -hmm. Like they're, I mean, like, or like my teenagers can read. Like it's not, you don't use any major violence or sexual situation or bad words. Like it's, it's they're still very, and you can get, you really get into the story for the story. Mm -hmm. You don't use any kind of outward modern stuff. I appreciate that comment because oh. I I was a reader. I read and read and read all the time I was growing up. My mom and dad were both readers. And as a young woman, I really uh, was still picking things off the shelf and reading them. And there were so many times that I ended up tossing it in the waste paper basket after the first few pages. Right, huh? <laughs> and, and I thought, you know, there's got to be an answer to this. Uh, I'm sure there are other fiction readers out there that are looking for something that is clean and upbeat. And yet, as a Christian community, we really weren't providing that for many years. Yeah. And so uh, that was one thing the Lord laid on my heart. There must be, and, and I was particularly interested in young women 
young gals, and I knew that uh, a lot of us like a story with some romance in it, <laughs> yet it doesn't need to be uh, tawdry. And, mm-hmm. uh, so I, I wanted to express, try to express, that the real essence of love is the commitment rather than the passion. Mm. Oh, that is so and, true. And so I, I thought, well, you know, I, I wasn't happy with what I was finding, and I thought there would be other people that would maybe enjoy something that was wholesome. And uh, so God just laid it on my heart these, that, I try to present something that would be work. Welcome to Book Circle Online. We are talking book three in the Canadian West series, When Breaks the Dawn, next. This is Book Circle Online, featuring in-depth discussion, insight, news, and commentary on all the world's leading book titles and their authors. And now, Book Circle Online. Hello, you guys. Hello. We are back. Yay. I'm going to let a little laugh. We are back. We're back to Book Circle Online doing the When Calls the Heart book series, the Woo. first book series, Canadian West series, When Breaks the Dawn. <laughs> We're talking about that. I am one of your hosts, James Lott Jr. We're so back to be here with all you hearties. We're so glad to be with you today. And my two ladies of the house. Woo. They're co-ladies Woo. of the house. Yes. <laughs> she has her voice. I have a voice. Maria Provenzano. Oh, hi, guys. I'm Maria Provenzano. You can find me at Maria Provenzano, and everything will be there. And I am so happy to be with you guys today. I have been missing the Hardys so much. Yeah. I just tweeted that out before, okay. like before we um, started shooting. I was like, I miss it. I miss When Calls the Heart. So I'm glad we have this. Yes, yes. I agree. And my lovely co host next to me. Yes, our fearless leader. <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Marissa Serafini. You can follow me on Twitter at Serafini TV. I'm glad Ooh. to be back. Yes. Yes. Yay. And I, you can follow me. A James Lodge Jr. you know all over the place. And thank you, Hardy's. <laughs> and Hardy's, thank you so much. I give you a heartfelt thank you for all the support you've given me the last couple of weeks of my brother's Aww. death. Yes. So it's been wonderful. You guys are a village. You guys really they are. are. They really are. You guys sent me flowers. I mean, it just it was amazing. I just I'm overwhelmed with joy and, and comfort. So it's very sweet, you guys. And I've already cried enough the last like three weeks. Aww. So, but thank you. And you guys in the chat room. Hello, you guys. We're glad you're here. Lisa's Yay. in there, Sarah, uh, uh, S. Matthews, Emily Johnson so far. I'm happy to see you guys. Oh we have Jeanette Oak coming Yay. on shortly. Yeah, I know. On shortly. Marissa's going to like pass out. She is. She's so yeah. excited. <laughs> she started this whole thing for us. Today's been a day. This, this is going to be, awesome. you, had a, you had a good day going for it too. But this is good so exciting because she is the creator of this whole movement. Right, oh, exactly. It's it's a it movement, is a movement, right? Yeah. It's a movement. And Marissa got us on board in the part of the movement. So I just yeah. feel like I always think to Marissa, she's the, <laughs> she's the one. Oh my goodness, I think we have her on the line. Ooh. Hello. Miss Jeanette. Hello there, everyone. Yay! 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 <laughs> How are you? I am fine, thank you. And you? We're good. So I'm Excellent. James. And then you guys I are... am Maria. Hello, Jeanette. Okay. I am Marissa. Thank you for being with us. We so appreciate it. Well, thank you for calling. It's our pleasure. I just want to, the first question I want to ask you is, how does it feel knowing that your books still resonate decades later? You know, that's the interesting part about history, and I love it because uh, even though things change, uh, even society, in a way, changes, yet the human needs never do. They carry from generation to generation. We still have that need of companionship, that need of being respected and accepted. Uh, we have our down times and our up times. And, and so the human heart, basically, though the, what goes on in the world around it might change a lot, stays quite constant. Oh, well you're going to make me cry. <laughs> well that put. is so, yeah, that's so beautiful. Well, Laurel and I had written together before. Uh, there's a book out called Dana's Valley yes. that we wrote together several years back that uh, was a very difficult story to write because we dealt with uh, the a family that had uh, a child uh, with cancer and the struggles that they went through concerning Ooh. that. So it was a hard story to write, but it's one that uh, a lot of families need to face. 
Mm-hmm. When Laurel was growing up, she had a friend who was from a family where they, the oldest child, and they were all still very young, but the older one had cancer, and the younger one had very serious seizures. So she was caught in between. Jeez. And be, because of necessity, the parents needed to to give their attention to these other two children and their very serious illnesses. And so what happens to that child? The one in the middle who, through no fault of the parents, right. no fault of her own, but she she's caught in a situation where there's not a lot of time or attention left to give. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, I, I felt this... Uh, deeply when she was visiting our home at different times. And I thought, what what happens in a family like that? What does it do to each of the other children? What does it do to the parents when you're, you're feeling that you're not fulfilling what that other child needs? Mm-hmm. And so we wrote a book trying to express that. Again, wow. it was our attempt to... Uh, help a parent be able to forgive themselves and also to make us as friends and family understand and and try to reach in and help where we could. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a very difficult situation. So it was a difficult book to write, but we found that as we were writing that, that uh, actually our our thoughts or our so in sync that she could be writing a chapter on Aww. one computer while I was writing on the other, and and the book just flowed. So writing mm-hmm. this series hasn't been that difficult, and Laurel has done a lot of the work because I had already retired when I was asked <laughs> yes. to do this series. <laughs> yeah. So Laurel has done a lot of the work on this. Aww. We were actually approached by the filmmakers oh. to do oh. the series, so there you go. and there you go. Uh, because they were planning to do the films, and so even though we knew that they were filming at the same time we were writing, the, the stories are still very different because a book uh, is a lot different in the way that you express and tell the story than what a film is. Completely, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a different genre completely. So you uh, you have to do it in a different way. Uh, in a film, they are showing you things, and uh, in a book, we are telling the story, but we're also able to give all of the feelings behind the actions mm-hmm. for the young readers looking for that. You know, they always say to create something you, that you want, you don't see. I love that. Mm-hmm. That, was that. that was your purpose. That was your purpose. I love that. Yeah. Oh, that's so inspirational. I know. Makes me want to cry. So how do you feel about this this movie, first TV movie, and now series that's based on your world? Well, it has been exciting. It, <laughs> it isn't particularly something that I would have sought <laughs> because yeah. I have never been a movie buff myself. <laughs> I, I, I prefer turning the pages. So, um, but certainly the individuals that uh, I have been uh, meeting since this series has started, Michael Landon Jr. and oh, yes. Brian Berg and oh, the yeah. others oh, yeah. involved, have been wonderful people to work with. It's been a real pleasure to um, be a part of this, and it's exciting to see what God can do with uh, the movies. Of course, I'm especially excited because when people see the movies, then they go out and buy the book. Right, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. Uh, That's just a little joke. (laughs) Uh, But, uh, you know, if God can touch hearts through this, I'm all for it. Now, Jeanette, I know this is basically like asking you to pick your favorite child, but our <laughs> our viewers who are who are watching are asking, do you have um, one of like your books that is, is your favorite one that you've written? No, it's like you say. It's like, like okay, okay. <laughs> you know they are not perfect, but you love them anyway. <laughs> uh, 
you fall in with the characters oh, as you funny. are writing the books, and yes. they all become very, very special to you, <laughs> and all teach you something. Yes. I've been amazed at how much my characters have taught me through the years. Mm. As you have to uh, gather your thoughts and, and put them in a way that you can present them to other people, uh, you learn a lot. Yeah. You learn a lot about yourself. And uh, so it's interesting to see that each one of these characters have had an important role in my own life of stabilizing um, my own views on things. And uh, so certainly they, they become very special. But uh, as I say, I know they're not perfect, <laughs> but they do have a story to tell and a message yes. to bring, and I appreciate that. Do you think you would be friends with Elizabeth? <laughs> <laughs> you guys be friends. You think, you think you'd be friends in real life? <laughs> uh, well, you know, uh, Elizabeth and Wynn, the stories in Wynn Calls the Heart, mm -hmm. that's my husband's favorite series of oh. the books that I have written. There you go, folks. So yeah. different, different ones appeal to different uh, yeah. people, yeah. and that is true in life as well. You, you're <coughs> friends and associates. You relate to... Uh, some a little more closely than mm -hmm. others, so. Okay. Yeah, and we know that, you know, you, you've done this book series, the six with the regular, and but then you also, because of the success of the show, you're still continuing writing the stories with the Return to the Canadian West series, and we believe that you actually co-write with your daughter. What has that experience been like? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Because these books, I mean, this series is still going on. Yeah. People are reading them today for the first time. Yeah. Like we are. It like we is are. exciting. It is exciting. It's, uh, I, I can only say that uh, God does wonderful things. Yes, he does. So uh, we will just accept the fact that he has a reason. <laughs> he does. Well, and is he the reason that you really, that brought you into the inspiration behind this book? Because these are so, you know, he is in all of these books. And so is that what really made you want to write these? Well, I had written uh, another series before this, in fact, a couple of series, and so I, this was well into my writing venture, mm -hmm. but the the thing that prompted me to, uh, to write this series is the fact of uh, the every instinct, I think, of, of us as young women, uh, most of us, in fact, have this great desire for family mm -hmm. and there are so many women that that is not fulfilled mm -hmm. i ache for them uh after we were married i lost uh i had a miscarriage with the first pregnancy and then we lost our baby boy full oh term goodness. he was oh. only a few hours old wow. oh my heart and I could have been, my doctor told me she wasn't sure if I would have children or not, mm -hmm. and I knew how it would have uh, really affected me had mm -hmm. I not had a family. Now, we have been blessed with four, which we're oh, very wow. thankful wow. for. <laughs> However, uh, there are many women that never, mm -hmm. never realize motherhood. And so this book, though you may not, catch it as you're reading the series is basically for that purpose wow to to deal with the pain mm -hmm. and yet uh with god's help to get past that and start looking for the other beautiful things that he does provide in our lives rather than being caught up on that one thing we don't have mm. and and i have seen women go through this where this has become such a, a big part of their life that they really can't appreciate anything else it's the yes. loss that just holds them back yes yeah um I, so I, it is my weak attempt of saying uh okay if there must be a reason in god's plan for mm -hmm. this look for it mm. find it and move on 
with God's help. I think it's a very strong attempt, not a weak attempt. I think that was a very strong, and it was very, as just a, a reader and a mother reading it, um, you created this this very wonderful character that everyone is so connected to, and to see her go through that was very, you know, for someone who has a child to be connect with someone who is going through those problems. You know, I have girlfriends who are mm-hmm. having a hard time, so it's so great to to read that and to hopefully understand that mindset. Well, thank you for that. The other purpose was to help us who do have families mm-hmm. to be compassionate and understanding mm. for people who might be uh, struggling with this 